Hey everyone, Julian here, and today I'm going to be showing you how to make Ski Mask style pads. So, as usual, I'm giving away the project file and samples and MIDI and presets from Studio in the description, so make sure to pick that up. And yeah, let's dive in. So, basically, I just wanted to make a kind of quick video showing you guys some techniques, because I've got a lot of questions on how to make those kind of, like, really smooth, sort of, like, futurized, futuristic, sort of jungle rave-influenced pads. And yeah, I figured I would just put this together. So this first one that I have here sounds like this. And so the way that I made this sound was with Ableton's analog. Um, any kind of synth that has this sort of vibe will work. Like I like analog because especially with the filter, it has like that really nice sort of smooth analog style sound. But you can definitely do this with like Massive or Serum or really anything. It's super simple. Basically what I have is I have two square waves and a little bit of white noise. Um, the second square wave is detuned, which is where most of the kind of like chorusy thing that you hear with this sound is coming from. So if I turn that off, you can hear it's still very smooth and that filter sounds nice still, but when you add that little detune on the second oscillator, it really gives it like that smooth kind of feel. Um, so yeah, so that was just that. You just make like the simple square waves with a bit of detune, and then the real key to the sound is in the filter. So you can see I have the filter set like this, but it's automated. I'll show you, there's the automation. So essentially what I'm doing with this filter is I'm moving it like over the course of this time. In this case, it's just seven bars that this plays over. And yeah, that's what gives it like that kind of motion. And so that's what keeps this sound moving. Like, you really need to do this because if you don't, all that you'll have is just like this. Like, that's not really the sound. And I think this is the problem that a lot of people have is a lot of times people just sort of think like, okay, let me just put, you know, the, the low pass filter on the saw waves and there it is. But you got to go the extra mile and do stuff like this. Like, you can see I got pretty detailed with this automation. There's like this little thing at the start that kind of thing like that. And yeah, that's where all of the sound is with this one. So you can also do this, like if you have a MIDI controller with some knobs on it, like an Ableton push or something like that, you just map it to one of those or use that. But definitely this filter moving is very important for this sound. Now, the other part of that is with this LFO1. You can see I have LFO1 on the filter, or on the frequency of this filter. Um, and yeah, so that's also moving it. While this is moving, this filter, while the frequency is being automated, it's also being moved by this LFO. And that's what keeps it going on those kind of lower parts where it's not moving as fast. Like if I turn this off, you can hear it gets a little dull there on those slower parts. So this is pretty important just to like keep everything moving. And another thing I will say is I think the resonance is pretty important for the sound as well. Like especially if you want that really smooth kind of like digital sounding sound. Um, if I turn the resonance off. You can hear it's not quite as like smooth and juicy as it was before, but if I bring the resonance back up. Yeah, so that's definitely very important for the sound. So after that, I just have the amplitude envelope set like this. It's just sort of like a brick. You play a note and it plays and then you stop it and it stops playing. And yeah, then finally in here, I have a bit of vibrato. I didn't want to use too much, but I like to use a little bit of it with a slow rate to just kind of give it like that sort of analog detune warble kind of thing. So that was what I did there. Um, and yeah, so then after that, I just have a bit of chorus, gives it a bit of space. It's kind of like furthering what the detune was doing. And then I have a bit of reverb. So this reverb is pretty important here because on those parts where the filter is like coming up and down pretty quickly, you kind of hear that ringing out. Like that one. If I had a sl like a shorter reverb, it's not as nice, so definitely important there for that one. So that's the first synth. Um, I'll show you the chord really quick that it's playing. All it's playing is this C minor ninth. So what I have here is I have C and then D sharp and then G. So there's a C minor and then we have a minor seventh, A sharp, and then the ninth, so D. So this is pretty much... Yeah, just like a pretty basic chord. And then down here I have just the root C and then the fifth G playing. Just to give it kind of like, you know, to kind of spread it across the keyboard a bit. But yeah, these kind of chords are pretty important. Another thing that I think people do too often is they make like a minor chord like this. And just kind of settle for that. But as you can hear, that doesn't really sound nearly as good as this. 
So if you really want to nail these style of pads, I recommend looking into like different major and minor seventh chords and ninth chords and all that kind of stuff, like sort of the jazzier kind of chords that are used a lot in this music to give it that kind of like nice smooth vibe. Um, so then for the next thing that I have here is the second pad. It sounds like this. And so this is meant to be sort of like call and response. Like this one plays. And then this one fades in playing another chord. So this one is playing just five semitones up. So it's playing F minor ninth. Um, yeah, really nothing too crazy there. Like I said, it's just an F minor ninth chord. And then I have, just like on the first one, the root and the fifth down an octave. And then for the synth sound on this one, it's a little bit more simple. Um, what I have is I have two saw waves, and those are going into a low-pass filter. The filter has nothing moving it. I was trying to make something a little bit more static for this particular sound. So I just kind of set the frequency and the resonance. And yeah, that's pretty much it for that. Um, so then after that, I have the amplitude envelope set like this. So I have a bit of a tack. You can hear the sound is kind of fading in. And then finally, I just have a bit of vibrato on here. I use it a little bit more than I did on that first pad because this one, since it's kind of like just hanging there, I wanted to give it a little bit more motion. So, yeah, that comes from the vibrato. It's just really slow, and then it's giving it like that kind of pitch warble. If I turn it off, you can hear it's just a little bit boring. Um, so then after that, I just have a chorus very similar to the first pad. Just gives it like more of that kind of nice chorusy depth. Here it is without it. And then with. So for this sound, it's pretty important. And yeah, you know, that's really it. Um, I mainly just wanted to show you kind of like two styles of pads and I guess sort of plant the idea in your mind of things you could do to make pads in this style. So that's going to be it for today, guys. Make sure to let me know what you think of this video in the comments. And make sure to like this video as well as subscribe. Um, you can get the project file and MIDI and presets and stuff in the description for free. So make sure to pick that up. And yeah, thank you again, everybody. And I will see you tomorrow with another tutorial.